Hello, today we'll be talking about perperionic acidemia. Perperionic acidemia, or PA, is a, an autosomal recessive disease caused by mutations in PCCA or PCCB. These two genes encode the alpha and beta subunits, respectively, of the enzyme perprionyl CoA carboxylase. This is a mitochondrial enzyme involved in the metabolism of amino acids and fatty acids. So this is a schematic of the metabolism pathways that lead to the production of propionyl CoA. There are three main pathways that lead to the production of propionyl CoA. The first is the metabolism of the vomit amino acids. These are valine, methionine, isoleucine, and threonine. Next, gut bacteria can also produce propionyl CoA. And fats are also able to, uh, particularly odd chain fatty acids, will lead to propionyl CoA production, which is a uh, three carbon amino acid, a three carbon compound, which you see here. Of note, propionyl CoA is metabolized into succinyl CoA, which then subsequently enters the citric acid cycle. It's metabolized from propionyl CoA via the enzyme propionyl CoA carboxylase, which is the which is defective in this disorder. So, it, this disorder usually presents within a few days of birth. There are other subtypes that cause a later onset. Um, and it affects about 1 in 100,000 uh, newborns. And it's more common in the Inuit population and in Saudi Arabians. So often uh, this will be detected on newborn screening and you'll see increased uh, C3. This is the three carbon um, perperonic acid that we saw on the previous slide. You'll see this from acyl carnitines by tandem mass spectrometry. Of note, you can also see increased C3 in methylmalonic acidemia and maternal B12, so watch out for those. As far as your history and physical exam, you expect to see a baby who's poorly feeding, is intolerant to protein, they're vomiting, and they, they don't really grow well. Uh, neurologically, they'll, they'll be hypotonic, they'll be floppy, they might have hiccups. Uh, which is particularly unique to this disorder, and uh, they're just going to be slow, lethargic. On the family history, look for co-sanguinity or siblings who died in the neonatal period. And in these patients, make sure to perform routine EKGs and echocardiograms because about a third of these patients have cardiomyopathy. Also very common is neurodeve neurodevelopmental delay, uh, coma, and seizures. And this can be due to the increased levels of ammonia that are present in patients with this disorder. So clues to the diagnosis of this disease include, on standard labs, your basic metabolic panel, what you'd expect to see are an anion gap metabolic acidosis. This is because you have increased levels of perperonic acid in the blood, which leads to the anion gap. You also expect to see elevated ammonia, and this is because ammonia is a byproduct of amino acid metabolism, which is affected in this disorder, as well as hypoglycemia. And this is because glucose is being used in, to produce ATP rather than amino acid and fatty acid metabolism, which is hindered in this disorder. Uh, also related to this is, are ketones, which can be present in the urine, and this is due to the increased usage of, uh, of glucose uh, because of the energy requirements that are shunted towards uh, glucose metabolism pathways. So metabolic labs, you'll expect to see increased C3 on your plasma acyl carnitines and also decreased free carnitine. Your urine organic acids, you expect to see increased propionic acid, increased methyl citrate, um, increased 
tubular glycine and increased propionyl glycine. So these two glycines you'll expect to see increased. And you'll also expect to see deficient propionyl coa carboxylase in skin fibroblasts or peripheral blood leukocytes. This is diagnostic of the disorder. Lastly, you can also do sequencing to detect the mutation in the, in the genes. So as far as management, there's three broad categories. The first is dietary. So patients with propionic acidemia should have a diet that's low in protein, low in odd chain fatty acids, and low in polyunsaturated fat. And if we look back to our schematic here, these are the three, these are some of the factors that lead to propionyl CoA generation. One special formula that does not contain the vomit amino acids is called Anamix, which can be provided to patients with this disorder. Next, medical management. This includes uh, using this mnemonic. Uh, first, antibiotics. This is controversial, but the idea is that they can kill the gut bacteria, which produce propionic acid. Bicarbonate can also be used to help treat the metabolic acidosis, which can stunt growth. Biotin is an essential cofactor for propionyl CoA carboxylase, as we see here. So supplementing that can increase any residual activity of the, of the carboxylase. Sodium benzoate can be used to reduce the ammonia levels in patients. L-carnitine can also be supplemented as carnitine levels are low in propionic acidemia. Carglumic acid, which is an analog of NAG, can also be used to help reduce ammonia levels. And in the acute setting, you want to use dextrose, which is essentially glucose, 10% with salt, uh, to provide these patients with an additional source of energy. Lastly, surgical management is sometimes indicated. Uh, a gastrostomy tube can be placed to help with feeding, and also a liver transplant can help improve the neurological symptoms in these patients. This is because the liver is the main site of metabolism in the body for amino acids and for fatty acids as well. So thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to our channel. And you can also donate at the link below to support this video and more other videos like it.